What attracted me to the project initially was, of course, Lena Horne, the legend, the trailblazer, the activist, the icon, the metaphor. But more than that, it was the irresistible combination of Lena and Sally. Obviously, there's the almost spooky resemblance, but it's more than that. There's something deeper in her, in Sally's spirit, that connects with Lena. There's her grace, yes, her beauty. But there's more to both women than just beauty and poise. There's that passion, that lioness ferocity that Lena found as she grew older. It's there in Sally, behind that heart-stopping smile. She's ready to tap into all those complex levels of want and emotion and exploration. We all know Sally can act, but more than that, Sally is ready to take on this encyclopedic role and literally channel Lena. Yesterday when I was young The taste of life was sweet as rain upon my tongue I teased at life as if it were a silly game the way the evening breeze can tease the I have to be honest, when I first sat down with this, I didn't know if there was an original way in. I didn't want to do the typical biography where it's just, oh, hello, I'm Frank Sinatra, or hello, I'm Sammy Davis Jr., or whatever. And then I hit on this moment in her life where she seemed to have done it all. She'd been a big star at MGM, she'd travelled the world, and then she decided to do a one-woman show. And after the preview, she was unhappy, and she went backstage and said, we've got to pull this show apart and make it better. And I suddenly thought, what if when she went backstage, the people she was doing that with were all these people that had died and left her alone to do a one-woman show. And then, boom, there she was in pieces in the dressing room, that, like a shattered mirror, all these different reflections, arguing with these ghosts. And that, of course, makes great drama. Let's clear one thing up. This face isn't beautiful. It's acceptable. If you're nearly white, you all right. If you black, step back. Why well, don't want to be all right? I don't want to be loved for how black I ain't. I want to be loved for how black I am. I want to be ebony, I want to be onyx, I want to be obsidian. I want to be thick-lipped, nappy-headed, and unacceptably niggerish. And I want to sing to Massa at mealtimes, and sing him to sleep, and then cut his throat. What do you think about your pretty, Nearly white girl now. I think that I have decided to do this play at the most perfect time in my life. I don't think that there is a part of Lena that I couldn't play and I feel very, I, I feel very close to her and I actually feel that a lot of her stuff mirrors my life. Yesterday, when I was young, so many happy songs were waiting to be sung And so many wayward pleasures lay in store for me And so much pain my dazzled eyes refused to see I ran so fast that time and youth ran out I never stopped to think 
what life was all about and every conversation I can now recall concerned itself with me just me and nobody else at all a workshop is a basically a tryout of a theater production. What we've done is we've created a script. We will now cast the script, work on the show for approximately two weeks, and we need an amount of money that will make us be able to get the workshop on, invite people to see it, get feedback, and continue working on the script so that we can then bring the workshop production to New York to put on a full Broadway production. Yesterday the moon was blue And every crazy day Brought something new and good and exciting for me to do I used my magic youth As if it were a wall And I never saw the pain And the emptiness beyond The game of love I played and pride and every flame I lit to quickly, quickly died and the friends I made oh they somehow just slipped away and oh Lena lived on the stage. Lena needs to be back on stage. <laughs>